Hey guys, what's going on? Rudolinol here. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've actually done a code commentary, so it feels a little bit weird for me just to be jumping right back on this bandwagon. But, uh, I mean, what's been going on with me? <laughs> Let's see, um, last weekend, last week, really, uh, I was up in Gunstock, New Hampshire, over in Guilford, I think, uh, and they were doing Soul Fest, a Christian music festival, and that's been keeping me busy, because that's a four-day event, and that was tons of fun. I stayed there with a couple of friends, we listened to great music and just had a great time, but, uh, yeah, that, that definitely took up a big week, that's why I wasn't been able to post much, and, I mean, that's that's a lot of concerts, so it's a whole lot of, like, headbanging, just getting together with a bunch of good guys, a bunch of a bunch of great guys, I can't talk, and having a good time, so, right after that, I actually ended up getting sick, <laughs> like, I had a sore throat, a headache, runny nose, all that bad stuff, it was just like a common cold, but it sort of evolved into, like, nose bleeding and vomits and ear infections, and it's just not that fun, uh, I think I still got a little bit of an ear infection now, but, it's no big deal, I'm back in action, <laughs> so, yeah, um, Let's see, soon after that, today I actually spent some time in Six Flags over in Massachusetts with a uh, friend Zaychevich, so that's been a ton of fun, but it's definitely been keeping me busy, and now that there's a, I've actually got a break and some free time now, I can settle down and finally start to work on my uh, summer reading essay that I might have mentioned in other commentaries, because that's going to strap me down too, and I'm not actually going to be able to start to code or do anything cool for you guys. So, I'm a little bit under pressure, but you know, it'll all happen eventually. Um, after Soul Fest, uh, a couple of days back, that was when I was doing a performance for, that I might have mentioned earlier, the community show, and that actually got rained out, and it was really a, a big bummer, because we were trying to do the show three days, and it kept getting postponed day after day, because it just kept on raining. <laughs> so, that really, really disappointed everyone in the cast, a couple of my friends were disappointed, but, hey, stuff happens, you know. Uh, okay, 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 I guess I should probably move on to something a little bit more interesting than my life now. <laughs> so, let's talk about the video. Um, what you're seeing here is, um, the new theme. Isn't that, isn't it like a pretty, a pretty desktop environment? <laughs> I'm still running GNOME, I haven't actually, I haven't touched anything with KDE, um, or any other desktop environments to begin with. I think to be in KDE you have to be under KUbuntu, or, or Kubuntu, I have no idea how to say that. Kubuntu. Some people, I, <laughs> you, you pronounce these Linux distributions in really weird, in really weird ways. It's Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. Uh, it all depends on how you want to do it. And there's obviously plenty of other distros out there that can garble your mouth and your tongue in any which way they want. That sounds kind of weird. I'm gonna stop talking now. But um, yeah. Back on track. This is the clear look theme I mentioned in another in another commentary. It's very pretty. Uh, it has a blue Ubuntu, if anyone that doesn't know that distribution, I think it's like a Ubuntu, just with lots of blue colors. <laughs> uh, blue Ubuntu background, and it's using the Python symbol in the terminal, and it looks just plain pretty. Cute and adorable. <laughs> um, and in this video, what I was trying to do was install uh, Windows. Uh, at least have a virtual machine, have a virtual box set up. It's using VirtualBox OSE. I think that's a product of Sun. I really shouldn't be saying because I don't know actually anything about the software. I just kind of use it and it gets me by because I don't want to be able I don't want to have to reboot into Windows because the can the the software that I use to record there is slow and bulky and the video doesn't turn out too well. I can't edit it. Uh, I have to deal with codecs and Windows is just a big big hassle. So I come in here and I do it all on Linux. But inside Linux, if I want to run Windows, I have to do a virtual machine and stuff like that. Because I don't know if you can run Visual Basic, which is the language that I was going to be playing with uh, under Wine. I know you can use cmd.exe, and that gives you like a minimal batch scripting that I'm going to be talking about later and later and later and later, because I'm going to be doing some more batch scripting and stuff like that. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. But it's still, like, it's still there. It's part of my life, and I can get that done when the time comes. But that's really all there is to that. Um... So yeah, we installed VirtualBox, and um, the thing is, I don't have a Windows installation CD, so uh, I have this uh, this Dell one 
this really this really old Dell Windows XP Service Pack One that I have that would actually only install without a product key on Dell machines. So I was really surprised that this one installed without a on without a uh, without a product key, without asking for verification, even though it's under a virtual environment. I thought that was wicked cool. I think I've talked about that in some blog posts over on nullshell.com, which is a great site. If you don't know, you should totally check it out. <laughs> That's my site. I post a lot of code there. If you don't already know, but hey. I should stop advertising. Back on subject, VirtualBox is running Windows, and it's it's still running Service Pack 1, and since I don't have the best computer, I have to allow only a little amount of memory and hard drive usage for um, Windows, and since I'm still trying to keep a good amount of um, uh, hard drive storage and RAM for Linux, because my computer is not that great, like I just sort of said, because um, I still I, I still only have 30 gigs on this partition, because I haven't done any native installations of Linux yet, because I'm a scaredy cat, but I should really just jump over that fence and go for it, just jump the shark, you know, install something cool, maybe Slitaz, maybe Red Hat, I think I've been trying to avoid Fedora, after watching so much of the Linux action show, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna be name dropping, I'm gonna pump this show right here, the Linux action show by Jupiter Broadcasting is an awesome show, they, uh, they, they show every, uh, every Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. They can do live streams, I think. I really don't know what their schedule is and too much, but I just know it's like 10 a.m. Sunday. And they'll do a show. It's Brian Lunduke and uh, Chris... I don't know Chris's last name, but I'm a big fan of Brian, and apparently he just hates Fedora and Red Hat. So, uh, I don't know. That kind of pulls me away from him because I, I really like the guy. He's a cool, cool dude. But, um, back on subject, what was I even talking about? <laughs> so, um... It's installing Service Pack One, and um, okay, I think I, <laughs> I think I'm I'm retracing my steps now about how my computer was not good, and I needed to do a native install to get all the possible hard drive space that I have. But hey, 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 back to work. Um, there's Service Pack One installing, and what I need to do is because some software for Windows doesn't run on Service Pack One, it needs to have Service Pack Three. Um. I have to install that. So it'll take an hour to install Windows. It'll take another hour to actually finish installing Windows because it gets your hopes up and then it like shatters you, you know. <laughs> and then you're going to have to install Service Pack 3. And then from there, if you want to do any more code things with it and that the Windows actually wants you to do, it'll, you'll probably want to install Microsoft Visual C++ and that entire suite. And since they don't let you choose the software that you want, which is kind of... um. I feel like that's cruelty in some way. <laughs> They'll give you a package that you have to install these certain things, but at least that one, that one, uh, it, it almost looks like dependencies in, re in repositories like Linux does, because that'll grab them all and do it for you in the uh, Microsoft Visual Express Studio fungus, because they just keep adding words onto it. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know the the deluxe edition, but that takes another hour to install. It just takes forever, so. Uh, I, I wasn't able to record the entire segment because it was just taking so long and I was trying to do stuff and actually provide content for you while it was installing. So the point of this video was to actually show it installing and then me playing with Visual Basic because that was a code commentary that I wanted to have material for, but I ended up just screwing around in Python and screwing around in Bash throughout this video. So that's what you're watching me doing. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> the next video, the next code commentary that I do, if I if I have time, if I find time to get another one in there before I start doing a uh, the summer reading, because I only actually have five days to do that, and five days is not very good for a student like me. <laughs> but hey, we'll get to work on that, and then Visual Basic will come. Because what I want to what I want to focus on with that is the the code that I'm going to present is looping through a directory and finding files that are executable and then it executes it executes them with a certain command line argument that you supply and um from there it'll just keep doing that and that way yeah you know it's a little bit of a smoother way to execute programs silently if you wanted to do it that way but it's it's a little it's not it's not complicated but it has a good like real life scenario that I want to talk about in the next video because I actually wrote that script for some uh I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little bit I'm gonna get a little bit hush right here for some hacking, <laughs> not so much hacking, but you know just surfing, net shares and net bios stuff like that. <laughs> so 
what I run is that's going to be checking out and gathering passwords because nursoft.net, N-I-R-S-O-F-T dot net, is a cool, cool site that lets you download lots of utilities for password retrieval. And if you, if you give them command line arguments, you can run them silently. And that's awesome. <laughs> I don't think you realize how awesome that is. So with Visual Basic, we just have them loop through this, this not even a list, it, f it finds them and runs them. So you don't get any errors if like something that's in your list isn't actually found, or you get an error when you're trying to run it. Because with Visual Basic, you can just supply the uh, on error resume next line of code. That syntax, and that's really cool. So yeah. Just, that's something you can be looking forward to for the next code commentary. I'm pretty sure I've talked for long enough on this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you got a little bit something out of me talking for 10 minutes. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. It'd be cool if you can give me a like, a favorite, just subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> so, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.